If I told you that you could dominate both AI search and Google rankings for your business just by using these five AI hacks that I use to rank a roofer in Kansas City, would you wanna know what those hacks are? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I got my clients recommended by ChatGPT, Claude, and other LLMs while still ranking number one on Google Maps with these exact hacks. So let me start with the first hack. This hack allows you to write content on your website that mimics the actual language that people are using to talk about your service niche in your city. That's important because if you can mimic the question that people will ask ChatGPT, you can give ChatGPT almost word for word answers that it will generate back. Do you remember a while back when people started to get ChatGPT to give recommendations on adding glue to their pizza to keep the cheese on when the pizza got too hot? They did that by having a question and answer section on Reddit that exactly matched the prompt that they then asked ChatGPT. ChatGPT is just math. It's very advanced math, very fancy math, and it has an ability to analyze words and word patterns to decide which words are important and which words can be safely ignored. All that being said, it's still just analyzing words. It doesn't actually understand anything. So what that means is if we have a FAQ section on our website that exactly matches the types of questions people are asking, when we give an answer, ChatGPT will often repeat that answer word for word. So this first hack is a three-step system to exploit what's on Reddit already. We're going to find the right questions on Reddit. We're going to respond to those questions naturally, both on Reddit and on our website, and then we're going to convert it to FAQ content. This is something where we took a house cleaning business in Austin from five to $10,000 a month to over $80,000 a month in six months. The core thing they had to do for that transformation was just be active on Reddit and make sure that their profile had their business name in it. ChatGPT was able to connect their profile responses to their business because of the business name present. Now, they spent 30 to 45 minutes every day on Reddit finding and responding to the right posts. That got them featured, obviously in Reddit, but also in ChatGPT and indeed in Google. And that helped them get the number of leads they needed to go from five to 10,000 all the way up to $83,000 a month for a house cleaner. So here's that first prompt. I'm going to show it on screen. Feel free to pause the video, screenshot it, give it to AI, let AI transcribe it, or you can join my school group. There's a link in the description below. All these prompts are available in that school group. There's also 2,900 people in that group, all SEO professionals talking about SEO, sharing their findings and learning how to do this better. We also just finished the monthly q and I was on for almost two hours doing deep dives, analyzing people's websites and and giving a path forward for what they need to do to rank better. This first prompt is a research prompt. So we're going to use it and it's going to have ChatGPT, scroll Reddit and other local business forums like Reddit to find the right prompts that we should care about based on your service niche and city. Our second prompt and again, I'll show that one on screen also, is our Reddit response generator. It's difficult to just write responses to Reddit because if it's too salesy, if it talks about your business too much, it's often going to be rejected by the moderators. So we really just wanna provide as much value as possible when we're responding to Reddit questions. Here's the prompt that gets ChatGPT to do exactly that. And our third prompt is the FAQ content generator. Based on the Reddit threads and the Reddit responses, we can now implement an FAQ section on our website that mimics the exact language real customers are using to talk about our service niche in our city. We know that Google and ChatGPT both love Reddit. So why not take advantage of it to make sure what we're putting on our website matches what people are actually talking about and what those algorithms care about. But at the end of the day, Reddit mentions don't convert very well if your GBP isn't optimized. So let's talk about the second hack where we're going to optimize a Google business profile in 10 minutes using AI. Reddit is going to help us get the authority and an optimized GBP will help capture the traffic. This is a, another three part system. The first part is to find the right category categories. And I'll tell you about the tool we use to do that in-house. Once we've found the right categories, I have a prompt that will help you identify the correct services and sort them to which category they are most semantically relevant to. And the third step 
is a single prompt to generate a year of posts to go on your Google business profile. All of this in under 10 minutes. You don't need to do weeks of manual work. We can just get it all done straight away. There's a video of me in the school group where I walk through a real client's Google business profile and do this optimization for them step by step. It's about a seven or eight minute video. Also in that walkthrough, I give you the blank checklist that I'm using that we use at my agency to go through and do the GBP audits. Choosing the right categories and services is huge. We had a client who is stuck on position 17 in Google Maps. We used these prompts along with that GBP audit. We made the changes and they jumped to position eight in just a couple of weeks. So the first thing we're going to do is find the right GBP category. So start with the first GBP category, whatever makes sense, whatever's closest to what your client or your business actually does. Then we use a tool called GMB Everywhere. Simply install that plugin on your Chrome browser, go to Google Maps, search for that primary category and find any business that has that as their primary category. You'll be able to then view how many GBPs are using that exact primary category and much more importantly, all the other GBP categories that are related to that primary category. This allows you to choose three or four optimum GBP categories in just a couple minutes based on what hundreds of thousands of competitive GPPs are doing. One example I often like to talk about with this is HVAC contractor, especially in the South where we don't have to worry about heating. Most HVAC contractors use HVAC contractor as their primary category. But the thing is, you will typically rank first for whatever your primary category is. And not very many people type HVAC contractor onto Google search. We'd rather rank for a term that people will actually type into Google search. For HVAC contractors, that's actually air conditioning repair services. So air conditioning repair services is almost always the correct primary category for an HVAC contractor. Yes, most HVAC contractors want an air conditioning replacement job, not a repair job. But again, no one searches Google for air conditioner replacements. Typically, their air conditioner breaks, it gets hot in the house, and then they search Google for somebody who can fix it. The HVAC contractor comes over, turns out it can't be fixed and it needs to be replaced. So air conditioning repair services is the correct category for HVAC contractors because that's the term that people search the most. That's how we analyze and choose the correct, most optimum GBP primary category. Then the secondary categories fall through from that. So for an HVAC contractor, clearly HVAC contractor, air conditioning replacement, air duct cleaning, furnace repair, things like that are going to be their primary category. Now, once we have their primary categories, we need a list of services. Now, again, with GMB Everywhere, you can see all of the services related to the categories you just entered. Go ahead and grab all those, give them to AI, and then use this prompt to not only generate additional semantically relevant services, but also sort them according to which category they're most semantically relevant to. Now I keep saying semantically relevant. All I mean by that is Google's algorithm uses a, a very consistent way to analyze human language to decide what exactly you're talking about. And that relationship between keywords and word patterns and word usage is semantic. So we wanna make sure that we're organizing this in ways that Google's algorithm will see as relevant, not necessarily in ways that you or your client see as relevant. Okay, here's that first prompt. The third step of the process is to keep the GBP active. To do that, we're gonna post once a week on the GBP. So here's the third prompt. It's going to create 52 weekly GBP posts that get you done for an entire year. Okay, so moving on to the third hack, we now have an optimized GBP and what we need next is a landing page that's going to convert visitors. So when I say landing page, what I mean is the URL that you end up visiting when you click the website button on the Google business profile. For the vast majority of local businesses, this is going to be their homepage. If you're an e-com store or a multi-location business, it won't be your homepage, but for most businesses it will. So let's talk about how to use AI to optimize that local landing page. We want to make sure that that this homepage is going to talk about a lot of the categories and the core services that your business really, really cares about. 
Again, you're going to rank first for your primary category, but you're going to rank second for the content that's on your GBP landing page. Content that's two or three clicks away from your GBP landing page is much harder to rank for and it's going to take a lot longer. So we just wanna make sure that the core services that we really care about are mentioned on the landing page. And we have one prompt to analyze the page along with the GBP categories and services we really care about that will add content to make sure we're touching on it. We also need to make sure that we're writing this page with users in mind, Google users. The GBP landing page is one of the only URLs that an actual human user will visit on a local business website. Something like 94% of traffic to a local business website, in my experience, goes to the GBP landing page and not much else. So what we think about is goal completion. Google rewards websites and businesses that complete the goal of Google's users. What I mean by this is if a user from Google calls a local business or visits a local business website, they have a clear need in mind. Very few people are visiting websites for local plumbers when they don't actually need a local plumber. So Google wants to see that your website and your Google business profile can provide goal completion for those visitors. So we're always going to start this GBP landing page by being very clear and very succinct as to why the users should call this business. Now, we had a plumber in Plano, Texas that we worked with. Their homepage title tag was the word home. After analyzing hundreds of local business websites, that is in fact the most common title tag for the homepage. That's because most website platforms have that as default and a lot of local businesses never update it. We always wanna use the primary category and city name in the title tag. Making that change plus optimizing the H1, optimizing for goal completion, talking about the local neighborhood, adding the FAQ schema, all of the changes that this prompt does move this plumber from the 11th position to the sixth position in just a couple of weeks. Let me go ahead and show you that prompt. Now the next prompt I'm going to share with you, we're calling it incognito ChatGPT search. What happens is ChatGPT starts to learn who you are, what businesses, what websites you're associated with. And just like Google, ChatGPT is programmed to try to keep you happy. What that means is if it knows you're affiliated with this particular plumber in Houston, and then you ask ChatGPT to recommend a plumber in Houston, it's going to recommend that plumber. Just like if you visited that plumber's website over and over on Google, then you did a plumber in Houston and search on Google, Google would share that result as one of the top ones. This is a common way that we work with clients who think they're doing really well when they're actually not. The way to fix this on Google is to do the search in an incognito window. That way, Google doesn't have any of the history about you or the websites you visited. It's just going to generate what it would generate for anyone who did this search. We can't exactly do that with ChatGPT though. So what this prompt does is it forces ChatGPT to temporarily forget everything it knows about you and generate a recommendation list as if you're talking about a plumber in Houston or whatever the service and city is for the first time. Here's that prompt. Let's transition on to the fourth hack. We know that a single page can work wonders. What if we decided to dominate with comprehensive, authoritative content? So what I'm going to give you is a prompt that allows you to create locally optimized service pages in just a few minutes. My internal copywriter team can write perfect content that's ready to post in 20 minutes or less using this prompt. For some businesses, simply optimizing the GBP landing page, your homepage, is going to be enough to rank super well. But for a lot of them, you're going to need more topical relevance, more content that convinces Google that you know what you're talking about, that you are a trustworthy business. So what you do with this prompt is produce all of that content. Instead of paying some agency $10,000 so that they can spend three months generating it, you can do this in an afternoon. It creates topical and geographical relevant content at scale. These are not blog post content. Blog posts are a waste of time for local businesses. They simply don't work. They don't provide topical or geographical relevance. That's what this prompt is designed to do. Write content that 
provides the relevance that Google's algorithm is looking for. Now I have a client in the city of Chicago, they do LASIK eye surgery. When he came to me looking for a new SEO agency, he was getting 80,000 visits a month from Google search, but almost none of those were local. Almost none of them were in the city of Chicago. They were for searches like how to preserve eyesight, what foods work best to preserve eyesight, eye exercises, and content like that, not content for people in Chicago looking for LASIK eye surgery. So what we did is we used this prompt to start producing geographic relevance. We wanted Google to know that this was not a website that was competing with WebMD, it was a local LASIK provider in the city of Chicago. Their traffic from Google Search Console actually dropped by quite a bit, but their rank maps turned completely green in just a couple of months and their call volume more than doubled. Here's that prompt. And again, all of these prompts are available in my school group. So let me transition to talking about the fifth hack. Content alone won't be enough. It needs validation or Google won't trust it. Google has always believed in external links, but after AI made content almost free, Google needs external links even more. So this final hack makes everything stick. It makes Google trust that the content you've produced is quality content that will serve its users well. Then it's up to you to convert them and meet their goal completion. So what I'm going to give you is a two prompt system that will locate local link opportunities that most of your competitors miss and a second prompt that will make sure that all of your citations are accurate. Remember that ChatGPT and other AI models like it rely on mentions instead of links. What that means is if your business name doesn't match, if you're ABC Plumbing or ABC Plumbing and Heating, ChatGPT sees those as two separate businesses. So this Citation Hunter prompt will make sure that you can locate all of these inconsistencies and get them fixed. Combine that with our local SEO offsite prompt that will allow you to build a lot of this trust without needing someone to manually research these types of opportunities. AI finds them, opportunities buried in local directories, in sponsorships that already exist, in partnerships. A client of mine is in Austin, Texas. We use this prompt and one of the sponsorship opportunities that it identified was a local TEDx talk that was going to happen at the University of Texas. They were looking for sponsors. The minimum sponsorship was $250. For $250, my client received a link from the University of Texas's website. This is an insanely powerful link from a .edu local college to a local business. Not only that, for $250, my client got to attend the TEDx talk. This is incredibly powerful to support these types of local charities and associations and get links from them to push you into higher and higher positions. This client in Austin got pushed into the top three in just a few weeks from position nine. Now, when you're running this prompt, make sure you use the deep research mode. It's going to take about 15 minutes to run the prompt and give you the list. And it is definitely worth the time to wait. Go make some coffee or something while it's going. It's going to find the local chambers, charitable organizations, blogs, youth sports leagues, community organizations, industry directories, etc. Here's that prompt. Sponsoring a handful of these organizations, this is the secret sauce. They're so powerful, they're just a few hundred dollars usually, and a couple of these are worth more than thousands of dollars worth of high DA links. Hopefully, you're not one of the SEOs who spent that kind of money on links for local businesses. You don't need to use that prompt. So let me show you the Citation Hunter prompt. This one will allow you to very quickly identify inconsistent citations so you can either get them removed or updated so that you don't confuse ChatGPT or Google with your actual correct business name. So those are the five AI hacks that we use to dominate local and AI search in 2025. If you implement even just two or three of these hacks, you're going to see your local search visibility improve dramatically within weeks, not months. But these AI hacks are honestly just the beginning. The real power comes when you combine AI optimization with the right local SEO foundation. So that's exactly what I'm going to cover in this next video, where I show you how to rank number one on Google Maps in 30 days using my complete local SEO system. When you combine these AI hacks with my other proven local SEO strategies, you will absolutely dominate your local market. Check out that video right here. I promise your competitors won't know what hit them.